have a small update on the Hyder project. I don't have any install footage because it takes a long time to record that. I'm kind of on a timetable and a lot of this has been pretty boring. A lot of gasket making. Any Minnesota YouTubers would recognize where I got that pile of gasket material. So a lot of that tedious, I uh, call it arts and crafts. Making everything yourself. First up, start with something easy here. Got that flywheel rebuilt. There's that new friction material. That's what actually propels the tractor and drives it. But when I was putting this back together, I wrecked my first piece of 107 year old hardware. So you may notice this bolt looks a little different. So we got all these square head material or uh, bolts hardware. And I, I can show you on the studs. I, I think most of this stuff's handmade on lathes. You can see the different, you know, finished cuts on the lathe and stuff. And I found a company called Blacksmith Bolts online. And this one's black oxide because they didn't have one in that length and plain steel. But I put an order on there because if by some miracle this goes together perfectly and I'm able to drive this in Albany, I have that band extension on this wheel and all those lugs. And a lot of them are loose, some of them are missing. So I put an order in. And one thing I found pretty neat with these guys is that you can actually order this hardware in plain steel. They even give you a warning saying that it might have surface rust on it. So it actually looks really close to what you had. And if you're really fussy, you could just flap disc the markings off. Uh, there's a square bolts that came with it, plain black oxide. They had heavy and plain. There's the original ones. So kind of happy. Found that stuff. It was pretty reasonably priced because you certainly can't really source all different sizes of that stuff at your local hardware store. This flywheel is the single heaviest piece of this assembly. I had to weigh this thing because every time I move it, I feel like uh, I need a chiropractic adjustment. 140 pounds. Anyway, we'll move on to the rings because they're a little tricky. Looking at the piston ring package, we ended up getting rings from Total Seal that came with the pistons. And total seal rings are file to fit. They don't come with any gap. Uh, most of the motors I've worked on have been wet sleeve kits. They come packaged. I would measure the gaps anyway, just to make sure they're in spec in case somebody made a mistake. That and some of the other stuff I've worked on, the bores are wore out. <laughs> I've never had to grind rings. So I had to buy a uh, ring grinder, not a fancy one. Doesn't have a dial indicator on it or anything, but you kind of get a feel for how much material to remove. So then the question becomes, what should these be gapped at? And that's kind of a loaded question for a couple of reasons. There's no specs, it's nothing you can look up. And you just kind of got to think about the application and learn uh, what range you should be in. So they have an SAE recommended ring gap clearances here and we are 4.31, which puts us in the recommended range of 12 to 22. Well, part of you thinks, you know, it's a low compression engine, wouldn't be, wouldn't hurt to have it a little tighter, kind of, you know, thinking that way. Um, I wanted some advice for a couple reasons. One was that we had switched from cast to aluminum, and forged aluminum has a fire, higher thermal expansion range than cast does, so it'll tighten up and spread more. And I ended up calling Total Seal, and he didn't really know much about that motor. <clears throat> nor would I expect him to, but ultimately with some of his advice and stuff came up with the conclusion that uh, being on the looser end would be better. If you're too loose, you can have port oil control and lose some compression, have a smoky motor, things like that, you know, how you'd expect a hundred year old motor to run. But the real danger comes on the high end. If, and I don't know how hot this motor runs, it is liquid cooled on the top. It is low RPM, so I'd imagine it's fairly cool. But with the different material in the aluminum and stuff, what you don't want to have happen is too much expansion. When the bores swell and the pistons do and everything, um, the rings, well, if they are allowed to hit each other, you know, then you have a catastrophic failure. So loose is safe. And the other reason why I was glad I called them is we're reviewing this parts package. And I had told those guys what the application was. And they had sent a standard oil control ring. Well, they had sent a 20 pound one and talking with a guy from Total Seal, he said, if you run 20 pounds on a splash lubricated motor, especially with that old cast, 
you will uh, squeegee the oil off the bore and prematurely wear it out. And so he had the part number ready to go and I ordered some 10 pound rings, which will leave more oil in there. Um, but that's what we need is lubrication. So never hurts to call and ask. So going on the side of caution here and going loose is safe. So they're all ground to 20 and uh, we gotta get these put together. So the clearance for this crank was already set by the Babbitt guy. That's what all these shims are, the shim packs. So as your Babbitt wears over the years, you would just pull a couple out and it would you know, tighten it up to get some back. But I went through and I got all the studs final torqued, which is nerve wracking, trying to drive these into that old rotten aluminum and how tight is too tight, you know, that kind of deal. Got all the studs in for the blocks, everything pinned in, retainers for the roller lifters and a final clean. And so a couple things I got to look for on here is that it fits nice. And there's absolutely no end play in this whatsoever. It's perfectly snug. And I'm sure some of these thrust surfaces will wear in a little bit, but just trying to think of the order of operation how to assemble this too. The other thing that's absolutely crazy to me is you've got this great big crank and the main caps are aluminum and they're just like feather light. And so on the bottom of that bat, but there's hand cut oiling grooves. I think I showed that before. And then you have material moved here and basically the oil just kind of channels through. And I don't know if the camera will pick it up, but there's some oil in there. You'll actually see little rings of it form where the screws are. And then it just kind of washes down in there and lubricates the bottom of the caps. And how those main bearings are fed oil as you can see, this is, uh, kind of feels like I have two left hands here trying to do this through the camera screen where the screwdriver's pointing. There's like a little pocket here that collects oil. And there's one for every, right here's the other one. You can see that screwdriver goes up in there. Those fill with oil. And this is upside down right now, and that's what feeds the bearings. And so as it splashes around, it just keeps bringing oil up into those, and then they, go through the oil grooves on the top side of the bearing and then they feed the bottom. And the one reason why I was really double checking things, this is the crank gear. That's the front, this is the back. You'll see that there's this big witness mark, basically a ring that was wore into it. When this motor was taken apart, the end play was horrendous. You could grab the end of that crank and slop it back and forth. And as you put this together, it gets a little tricky to drop this into those bearings because it'll kind of hit on the size of it because that is actually what keeps it positioned. And I was looking at this, just making sure, because I got to put that gear back on and I got to take it out to do that because I don't dare want to pound on this with it in because then, you know, this bearing material is going to take all that thrust from the blows. But I was happy to see George did a good job here. So the journal stands proud of the bearing material a little bit so I can take that out, drive it all the way in, drop it in carefully so that none of the teeth hook and grind on that. But so should be nice and tight. We'll finish off by uh, looking at the complex oil system here in the pan because I'm going to put that together, do a couple other things, put the blocks on. And then we just got to think of order operations, how to get those pistons in and what not to put in first, you know, like cam in the way or what we got to sling it in, all that kind of stuff. This is the oil pump drive. So on the back of the can, there's a bevel gear and this housing bolts on that case and that bolts in and this rides in here. And this actually is the bearing. You can see there's an oil groove in there. And that's the other thing you gotta watch when you're making gaskets. Cause the one that I pulled out of here was paper thin. So if you put too thick of a gasket here, you can actually affect the gear lash a little bit. So that piece drops in, drives the shaft. Since the last video too, this has all been put together. This is the oil pump, it sits externally, drops down from the shaft from this. And literally it's just got a little joint in there and that's what the drive is. So you can actually service the pan without having to take anything apart, it's all outside of it. So this guy bolts right on the back of this and there's that spring in there and this goes in here and then you actually sandwich the screen and that's literally your oil filter. That's all it has for filtration. <clears throat> and then there's a plug 
that's recessed that goes in here and that collects all the debris. And then there's a, this copper line that comes through. I might've shown that in the disassembly. And its only purpose is to fill the splasher tray and these. And that just splashes around and fills those trays to lube the mains. And uh, the rest of it hits the cam and that's it. So I'll be back in another video because uh, the big pieces are going to start going together pretty quick now. So still hoping to get it done by September. That's if everything works right and I don't have to source any oddball things that I overlooked. Till next time.